The e-justice action plan is an essential practical instrument used for law and legal procedures in Europe. It offers cross-border identification of the competent legal authorities by applying proven interaction and technical innovations. To ensure that anyone can initiate legal action, users are thoughtfully guided through procedures. Meet Peter Smith, a 50-year-old Englishman who lives in Amsterdam. Some time ago, he bought a batch of wine from a distributor in Lyon, France. The wine, however, never arrived. Peter endeavoured to contact the wine company multiple times, but he got no reply. He is now taking action by filing a European Account Preservation Order, also known as an EAPO. Peter is a clever man, but he has no legal background. Few people enjoy filling in legal forms. Common unwanted reactions include it's taking too long, being too complicated or too far out of their comfort zone. We do not want Peter to experience any such reaction. By anticipating Peter's expectations, we make completing the EAPO application more manageable. Although a court in the Netherlands will only accept the EAPO in Dutch, Peter can file the application in the language with which he is most comfortable. To assure Peter that he can accurately complete the application, we first list all the supporting documents he will need to conclude the procedure. The application begins from the user's perspective, requesting the creditor to identify as an individual consumer or a company. Starting with a simple question allows users to get comfortable with the interface. Once they begin, users tend to be loss averse, therefore finishing what they have started. Keeping the number of questions to a minimum eases the workload and showing users their progress motivates them. Layering in extra information helps Peter to fully and accurately complete the form. Each element is structured for optimal guidance. A label describes what the field is about and a placeholder signals how to formulate the input. Extra input requirements are specified under the encircled I. Feedback tells the user if the input is correct or, if not, guides the user as to how it should be. Where possible, the system autocorrects input. In this telephone number field, we removed Peter's leading zero and inserted a space after the city code. So as not to discourage users unfamiliar with a term or field, we provide tooltips that give brief explanations. Sometimes a link formulated as a question is placed to provide additional information that explains why certain data must be acquired. By facilitating Peter, we prevent him being turned off by the prospect of a bureaucratic procedure. Our aim is to not scare people away from taking legal action against fraud. By adaptively structuring the question path, the user is only asked relevant questions. Thanks to a multitude of pre-existing databases, there is no need to enter certain data manually. When Peter fills in his country, postal code and house number, the associated street and city come up automatically. The form has the intelligence to suggest which jurisdiction may be applicable to a particular case, based on given entity and country or location. The user, however, is free to select a more appropriate ground of jurisdiction. The suggested court is based on previously chosen grounds of jurisdiction. These details automatically load from a database. Though users are free to select another relevant court, Peter, like most people, accepts the suggestion. Applying digital interaction to support cross-border legal procedures is a win-win situation. Because it is designed around the user's needs, they are thoughtfully guided through each step of the procedure. As a result, the legal authorities only receive applications that meet the requirements, and the satisfied user has greater trust in the competent authorities. The final step is to sign the digital signature system of the user's home country. Once incorporated, the system sends the application to the competent authority. A copy of the application can now be downloaded for future reference. The user is informed that a successful delivery does not necessarily mean the application has been deemed eligible. Taking legal action is not the same as booking a flight. However, there is no need to make the procedure any more complicated.